Hey, book lovers. My name is M, and I want to talk about books and cats. Welcome, book lovers. So let's get right into it this week. This episode has a definite theme, Final Girls. So I am a huge fan of horror movies, especially the campy ones from the 80s and 90s. And I've always loved the final girl. The lone female survivor, the one who kills the killer in the end, maybe. Both books in today's episode are about what happens to final girls after they become final girls. So let's get right into this week's book because it is a fantastic one. Let's talk about The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I listened to this one on Audible and it was fabulous. Adrienne King is a fantastic narrator. She does voices very consistently and was able to differentiate between all of the characters really well. This one was a random pick. I get a lot of things by him recommended to me. And I picked it because of the title. I knew it would be either good or terrible. It's always a gamble, right? But this one was great. So our narrator is Lynette. She's a final girl, although not really, according to some people, because she didn't kill her monster. She just played dead. Now, one thing I love about this book is the references to huge, well-known horror franchises Lynette is the girl from one of my personal favorites, Silent Night, Deadly Night, a classic horror Christmas crossover, and to be honest, it was the beginning of my love for that genre combo. If you have seen this one, Lynette is the girl on the deer antlers, if you know, you know. (laughs) The other women in the support group represent the bigger, more well-known horror final girls. Girls who survived when no one else did. Killed their monster, though not really, because they always came back for another attack. In this book, the stories are real. The girls are now women trying to survive in the real world with the terror and paranoia that comes from being so brutally attacked and watching all of your friends die. The paranoia really adds to this story. Each woman has her own way of dealing with it and keeping themselves safe, but it does make for a really unreliable narrator which, of course, is one of my favorite things. (laughs) Lynette is for sure crazy, but could she also be right about some things? She notices everything. She sees patterns and she trusts her gut. All super useful for survival, even if not for, you know, looking sane. (laughs) And it turns out that she is not done needing these skills. Someone is attacking the final girls and killing them, if possible. The support group is splintering when the book begins. The group is run by Dr. Elliot, who has been working with them for the last 16 years. It kind of makes sense that the group is splintering, but Lynette clings to the group. She worries about Heather, who has a drug problem since her attacks. But everyone else seems like they're more concerned about Lynette. She's immediately unreliable, and you spend a good chunk of the book wondering about her sanity, what is real and what isn't. It doesn't help that she hears the voice of her houseplant in her head and she talks to him. No one else really buys into the idea that someone is after the final girls. And the first one who died, Adrian, who was already dead when the book begins, her death doesn't seem that suspicious. Next, Heather's group home burns down, which is blamed on her because they assume she's using again, though she claims she slept in the woods that night. Next is Danny, who is dealing with a dying spouse, She's locked up for attacking a police officer and jailed while the love of her life is passing her last days. As for Lynette, she is terrified when someone shows up at her door. But it's Julia, another final girl, one who was put in a wheelchair by her monster. She had Lynette's address in case of an emergency or if Lynette missed group for any reason. But Julia is really worried about Lynette. They all are. As she's telling Lynette this, Someone begins shooting into the apartment window. Julia is hit and Lynette flees, which is another difference. A real final girl comes back, and she stayed away. 
Lynette gets worse and worse as she tries to unravel this mysterious person who's attacking them. No one else believes her, but she is certain, though she changes who she thinks it is numerous times. This story then takes a sharp turn when there is news of a new final girl, a young lady, of course, who survived yet another attack at Camp Red Lake, the place where Adrian was attacked, which she then purchased later on and turned into a place of refuge for survivors. Now there has been another attack, and only one girl remains. Things get wild from here. Lynette is determined she can save the girl from who she now believes is after them all. And things just get crazy. This story hooked me and just kept going. It unravels in a way that feels like madness, and you really get into Lynette's headspace. It's really well written. I definitely recommend The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. And I definitely also recommend the audiobook narrated by Adrian King. It is so good. And it's long. If you like to get the most for your Audible credit, this one is a two-parter. And so good. Anyway, this book made me want to reread one of the early Sager books. I think it might have been the first one of his that I read. And don't worry, I'm not going to talk about Riley Sager in every episode. It just worked out that they were back-to-back this time. Next week, no Sager, I promise. (laughs) But for now, I decided to revisit Final Girls by Riley Sager. This one had a very different vibe from the first book. There are only three final girls in this one, and they have never met each other. One of them, the first one, Lisa, wanted the three of them to get together, and she tried everything she could to help the other two adjust after they became final girls. But then she ends up dead, and they suspect it's a suicide, but Quincy, our main character, doesn't believe that it could have been a suicide. There's no way that Lisa, A, would have used a knife because of what she went through, and B, there's no way she would have killed herself because she had already survived so much. Like, why now, you know? This whole discovery throws Quincy into a tailspin. And then the other final girl, Samantha Boyd, the one who's been living off the grid for years, just randomly shows up on Quincy's doorstep. And then things take an awful turn. It turns out the first final girl was murdered, and now the other two are in danger. As with all of Sager's books, the twists and turns abound until the fabulous and quick ending. It's a satisfying read for sure. They're very different books, but I think I enjoyed the final girls' support group a little bit more. It had some humor to it, and I enjoyed the references to the classic horror movies that I loved as a kid. Both of them were great, though, and I would recommend both 100%. And especially the audiobook versions. They're both really well done. And I love a good audiobook. Tell me a story, please. And speaking of stories, there are going to be several new stories this season, and Storytime with M is back again. Check it out where you listen to podcasts or on the Books and Cats YouTube channel. And for even more stories, stay tuned for an updated Books and Cats substack. Let me tell you a story. But for now, it is time for the quote of the week. This week's quote is from the Final Girls Support Group. It hit me just right while I was reading, and I stopped to write it down. In the book, it is attributed to Adrian, the dead one. I thought it sounded familiar, and there are all kinds of versions of this one, including one from the Bible. I guess hope is just universal. Anyway, the quote is, No one is too far gone to come back. No one is too lost to be found. And I love it. It's so poetic and hopeful. I know I've been through some times when I could have used this one. I hope it helps if you need it. It is 1000% true. I know that for a fact. Even if it seems completely hopeless, you're never too far gone. And with that, book lovers, another episode is done. I hope you all have a beautiful week. I hope you find some good stories and share some of your own. Have a peaceful week, book lovers. And until next time, keep reading. If 
Scrap Media Production.